Morning, Tony Seth. How are we doing today? Good. In the room, a bunch of flyers. No, that's a good morning. Good morning. Hey, my name is Staff Sergeant Wynn. I'll be covering the UXO brief. Reference is FM 21 16. Next. All right, our TLO for today identify potential UXO hazards. Ident so, standards identify UXO by type, subgroup, recognize associated hazards, as well as Report UXO using a standard nine line UXO spot report format. Next. So, what is a UXO? UXO, short for unexploded ordnance, which are explosive ordnance such as bombs, rockets, missiles, grenades, and landmines that are deployed but do not detonate as intended. Next. <coughs> Impacts of UXO. For countries recovering from conflict, these devices impede social economic development and the achievement of sustainable development goals affecting not only present but also future generations. These devices make agricultural land unusable, restrict access to water, hinder construction, maintenance of infrastructure. So in Kosovo, uh, there's conflict that happened between the federal uh, liberation of Yugoslavia as well as, um, I want to say, Kosovo Liberation Army in the 1990s where cluster bombs, cluster munitions, as well as landmines were in place. So that, that country is densely saturated. So whenever you guys get into the country, you'll you probably encounter a lot of entities as well as damaged livestock. Next. Safety considerations. UXOs may be susceptible to electromagnetic radiation and may detonate. This could come from communication transmitting devices. So avoid the area where a UXO is located unless absolutely necessary. When a simulation has been identified, leave the area you've entered. There may be some more simulations within the area. So never move, strike, or jar a UXO. Next. So we'll be covering four types of UXO hazards. You got drop. So drop munitions, dispense or drop from an aircraft. We'll be covering the three subgroups, bombs, dispense, as well as the submunitions. Next, rejected. Fire from artillery, tanks, as well as recoilless rifles. Thrown, hand grenades, as well as place commonly referred to as landmines. Next. Drop munitions. The first one we're going to cover is bombs. <laughs> yeah, I don't need those folks. Right. Okay. So, for general purpose bombs come, with, come in many different shapes and sizes depending on the country that, that made them and how they're used. Generally, all these bombs are built the same and consist of container, fuse, and a stabilizing device. Next. Dispenser. Like bombs, carried by your aircraft, dispensers come in many different shapes and sizes depending on the payload inside. Contains numerous submunitions or bomblets. As a failed cluster bomb, which failed to dispense the submunition, subsequently fell apart upon impacting the ground. So you may encounter a lot of these in Kosovo. Submunition, classified as either bomblets, grenades, or mines. They're small explosives filled items designed to saturate a large area. So the main groups that are affected by cluster bombs to children because they don't know where it is. And it's about a baseball size, maybe a little bit smaller. Next. <laughs> Projected ordnance. All right. <laughs> Five subgroups. Projectiles, mortars, rockets, guided missiles, rifle grenades. Yeah, that's nice. All right. Next. All right. Fire from artillery, tanks, and toilet rifles, like bombs, can have impact or proximity fuse. They can also be fused with a time delay that functions at the present time. So for safety considerations, 
objectiles should be considered as having proximity fusing. They don't get too close, or the fuse or proximity will cause the fuse to function and the projectile to blow. Okay. Mortars, although small, these projectiles can be dangerous if they're in close proximity. Mortars are fused like artillery rounds. Okay. So, the main difference between a rocket and a guided missile may be defined as a self propelled projectile, unlike guided missiles. Rockets cannot be controlled in flight. While rockets have been and still are used as weapons, the word rocket does not convey the sense of being guided the missile does. Next. Guided missiles are like rockets in that they consist of the same parts. The difference is that missiles are guided to the target by various guided systems. Okay. Okay. Rifle grenades. Designed to be fired from rifles or shoulder fire launchers resemble rockets, but are small. Pretty simple. That's it. So, grenades. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, it contains three main parts a body, a fuse with full ring, safety clip, and a filler. Place ordnance. You may encounter plenty of these over there as well. Uh, their containers may be either wood, plastic, or metal. Next. All right. React to UXO hazards. Do not touch, disturb the UXO or any wires, parachutes, or anything attached or surrounding the UXO, or any smells. So when you guys mark a location, try to mark it waist high. Right? So, all right. If we're out of control. You walk and you're like, oh, my life sucks. Can't wait to play Xbox or go skiing. And you encounter one, it's like, I don't know, five feet away from you. Take a couple seconds, look at it. All right, mark it. Hey, Zor, that's a building. All right, don't take a picture and just walk away and tell someone like three days later. All right? Next. Five C's, actions on IED and you. So, step one, confirm. First step in encountering a suspect, sus suspected IED is to confirm that it's an IED or a UXO. So if you, once you're performing a 5 and 25, it should act as if it could detonate at any moment. It turns out to be, even if it turns out to be a false one. Step two, clear. If an IED is confirmed, the next step is to clear the area. Safe distance is determined by several factors. Tactical, tactical situation, avoidance of predictability, Movement several hundred meters away. Meant to see will dictate how far you'll go. Next. <coughs> Call. While the area around the ID or UXO is being cleared, a 9 line UXO report should be called in. Next. Step four. Court on the area. After the area has been cleared and the UXO has been called in, soldiers should establish fighting positions around the area to prevent vehicle and foot traffic from approaching the ID and UXO. The entire perimeter of the affected area should be secured and dominated by all available personnel. Next, control. Since the distance of all personnel from the ID and UXO directly affects their safety, <coughs> soldiers should not control the site. Soldiers should control the site to prevent people from drifting too close until the ID which is cleared. So this is your, sti your standard nine line. You can also find it in these right in array notebooks. It's all with the PX for like, I think seven bucks. It also contains nine line minute packs as well. Next. Here's an example. Next. Check on learning for the four types of DXOs. Correct. All right, you got drop. Plate, projectile, drone. What are the five C's? Come on, guys. Cordon. What? Yes.
Any, any questions at this time? That concludes my briefing. Thank you.